The Sandy and Todd Cast is a Mind Garden Media podcast in association with Screw You Todd Productions. Broadcasting from two very different yet magical places not found on any map. Get ready to discuss the strange, weird, ghostly, crazy, spooky, and odd things that take place around us each and every day. All while having a little bit of fun. This is the Sandy and Todd Cast. Welcome again to the Sandy and Todd cast. Once again, she is Sandy. He is Todd. And we are talking ghost hunting 101, paranormal investigation 101. And today it's all about protection. Protection. Yeah, this season's all about the things that you and I have learned over our years of investigating and learning about the paranormal world and spirits and ghosts and everything else involved with it. And uh, so far, it's been a lot of fun. We did an empathic carry last week because of some stuff that was going on. Mm -hmm. And so I'm ready to get back into this season. So ghost hunting 101 this week, protection. I Something that happened over the last couple of weeks or so, uh, Steve Deshavi, who is uh, the police or former police investigator on Dead Files, mm-hmm. uh, finally posted that it is, uh, it's a done deal. The show will not be coming back after yeah. many, 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 <laughs> many, many seasons. And um, yeah. it just sounds like the network... The Discovery Group, which was, I believe, purchased by or they purchased another network. And so they were up to their earlobes and debt and all that just decided to start cutting all these shows. So right now, if you're looking for investigating shows when it comes to paranormal and you want new stuff, there's not much out there except that goddamn Zach Bagans piece of shit. <laughs> And I refuse. I I'm not watching it. Refuse to watch anything Ghost Adventures. I don't care if it's haunted objects. I don't care if it's haunted. I I don't care if it's his haunted asshole. It doesn't <laughs> matter. It doesn't well, matter. That might be kind of want- interesting, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want anything to do with Zach Baggins and his possessions and possessed body parts. I don't care. We had, and listen, we were lucky. <laughs> uh, we had a number of shows that were kind of entertainment driven, like uh, Ghost Brothers. And uh, what was the show with um, Osborne and the Ghost Brothers? The um, Oh, they'd watch uh, the clips and all that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was yeah. kind of cool, too. That's entertainment kind of stuff. Fun stuff. Yeah. But we also had a bunch of shows that I felt were actually really good at getting to the bottom of things and were honest. And that was Ghost Hunters and uh, Kindred Spirits and Dead mm-hmm. Files. And now those are all gone. It's like, will somebody please pick these up? <laughs> there really isn't much out there. And the stuff that is coming out is. You know, let's look at it like baseball, like the farm teams in baseball. You know, you've got your A teams that are just these young college kids starting out. You know, double A is kind of mid-level. They're getting them ready to get to the big leagues. Triple A is right there. You're right there on the cusp. And then the big leagues. And so we're getting shows now that are kind of A, double A, if we get them and it's just too hard for me to watch them. I feel like there's a few out there that still linger that if they were done just a tad bit better, they would be mm-hmm. interesting and entertaining, mm-hmm. but they just can't get over that hump. Yeah. And all of the stuff that was really triple a and major league is now gone. Yeah. Yeah. I will say that I I did see, uh, I don't know if you saw this, but uh, Chris Williams and Dustin Perry, who were members of Ghost Hunters, will be doing a show on YouTube called Mm -hmm. Rebellious Spirits. Yes. And that's exciting. That's very exciting. I also, um, I was just going to, I'm so glad you said that because I was going to bring up YouTube. YouTube, a lot of these people are actually going to YouTube. Yeah. Katrina Weidman who did Portals to Hell. She was on Paranormal State. 
Um, she did Paranormal Lockdown with Nick Groff. She has her own channel that she is doing. And of course, I can't think of the name of her sh- her YouTube show, but she's actually doing investigations on YouTube now. Oh, I like that. So I always liked her. Yeah, I always liked Katrina. So if you like a certain paranormal personality or personalities or show, dig into YouTube a little bit because a lot of them are moving everything over there now because they can't do their shows on the networks. Um, Who else? Oh, Project Fear. I just saw Project Fear has a new episode out. They were... um, uh, Destination Fear. Now they're Project Fear. And uh, they have a new episode out. They have one season that they've already done on YouTube. So I highly suggest checking out YouTube because there are some really, there's some really silly, goofy stuff out there, but there's some really cool, serious investigation stuff. Even Nick Groff, who kind of walks the line for me, he's a little bit dramatic, a little bit true dramatic for my, you know, uh, because honestly literally in an investigation there's not a lot of drama going on right um just not a lot of drama going on so but check out youtube it's a great source now you know a year ago i probably wouldn't have said that but now i am because they are starting to move over there and a lot of these personalities are finding that it's better for them to still do what they love to do and be in the public eye by going to youtube so that's is her, a is really her, good is one. her show called Travel the Dead? Yes, that's it. Okay. Travel the Dead. Yes, that's it. Hang on one second. Spike, uh, <laughs> his dad just got home. So hold on one second. Let me let him out. Or will I have to listen to him squeal for a half hour? All right. And, and she's there back. We go. There we go. And I'm back. He'll squeal for the next 45 minutes. So might as well just let him out. Yeah. All right. (laughs) So, yes. So YouTube is a big one. I was just ironically, before we started recording today, I was ironically going through my Discovery Plus app and there is zero new. Zero new. Nothing. And I haven't looked at it in probably a good month or so because we've been watching a lot of the true crime stuff. Yeah. Um, but there's like literally nothing new. So, yeah. And, you know, I would love to see Cindy Kaza do something on YouTube. I know Cindy, maybe Cindy and Steve do some stuff on YouTube. Yeah. Um, I thought they worked very well together, especially since everybody knows Amy Amy Allen and has known her for what was it like 16 seasons? Yeah, it was a lot, a lot. And um, but I think Cindy is fascinating. And so it would be kind of cool to see them do something on YouTube, too. You know, at least there is an option. Years ago, there was no option. If your shows disappeared, they were done. Yeah. So, you know, but yeah. So let's talk about protection this time around. Let's take a moment really quickly to tell uh, a story for each of us of a time before you really understood how important protection was when maybe something happened to you that opened your eyes to making sure that you protect Mm. yourself. I'll, That's a good I'll, I'll tell my, my real quick story. I've told a million times on this podcast, Okay, but it was the time when I went to Washington Island in Door County here in Wisconsin and uh, was there and it was very early. I wouldn't say necessarily early on, but a couple of years ago um, and we were investigating and I brought something home with me that was pretty dark and depressing and all that kind of stuff. And I think that really taught me like, you know, I, I understand how dangerous it is and stuff like that, but I you, you kind of think to yourself, well, if now we're going to happen to me, you know, I'm not a Zach Bagan, <laughs> so I'm not going to get, you know, possessed and shit. But it really made me realize that it doesn't need to be possession. It could be just something that kind of lingers. And so protection became very important to me, especially after that. What about you? Totally agree with you on that. And it's interesting because it isn't just something possessing you. 
it's following you. And if you ask any of the um, the top echelon investigators that are out in the public eye, they will tell you that most of them have had something like that happen to them at some point. Yeah. And, you know, we all have the aha moments. I always thought it was important, but I will tell you that one of the times when I realized that a true how important it truly was was back in 2020 when we were doing this restaurant and we were down in the basement and it was it was for the show ghost pubs and grub i did one during the pandemic so we only got three episodes out but this one was for a restaurant in baldwinsville new york and we were down in the basement and um There was this, and we joke about it. We've been joking about it for years now, but at the time it didn't really dawn on me because when you're investigating and you're in the moment, sometimes you don't think about what's happening in the moment. It's not until after the fact that you realize that maybe you didn't do what you should have done. And that was the case for me. And we all joke about the black mist. It's been a running joke. But in the moment, I walked towards it. I walked kind of into it. And I literally, in the camera, disappeared. Now, when I was in this, I didn't necessarily feel anything negative. But... What that did was it kind of woke me up to say, okay, but what if there was something negative in there? And even though um, we did do the opening and closing prayers for each investigation, I didn't I didn't carry things with me. I didn't set intentions the way I should have. And I realized that after the fact. And I realized just how important it is to go in armed. And I don't mean just with your crystals or just physically or just you have to go in mentally armed right and i realized this after the fact that was my big uh aha moment and since then i've taken on a whole different approach to protection during an investigation um and also everyday life and we'll talk a little bit about that too because really negative energy is everywhere if you think about it There's negative people, there's negative spaces, there's places that make you feel bad and you're not sure why. And you don't have to have special abilities to feel that way. There's a lot of negative energy out there. And there are ways that you can do that on the day to day. But Todd, I'll tell you, that was the one where I really, after the fact, looked back and said, I need to do more. Yeah. I need to do more than what I'm doing, because what if that didn't turn out okay? Mm Mm-hmm. You know, it's not anything to mess with. So. So let's get started. Where are we going to start today, Sandy? Well, I was thinking about talking about a few of the different kinds of ways that you can protect yourself. Now, this is just me and not everything may work for you, but you can pick and choose or come up with your own ways of protecting yourself. And this is mainly for investigations, but you can apply it in many ways to your everyday life. I always try to meditate before um, um, an investigation, even if it's for five minutes, 10 minutes. I try to put myself in a quiet, calming state and clear my mind and just let myself be for a few moments. And I envision this shield of protection around me. And everybody does it a little bit of different. But what I do is I kind of envision it coming from the top of my head and coming down almost like a dome over me. And I set that intention of keeping myself protected. It's my shield. Okay. Um, I always make sure that I do an opening prayer. I am an ordained minister. So, but you don't have to be, you don't have to be, this is your belief system, whether it's Christian, it doesn't matter what religion or non-religion you are. It's saying a prayer or a, an intention to 
keep yourself protected. Keep those around you protected. I say it at the end, too. I also I say, you know, thank you to whoever has kept us safe this evening. And we thank you. And I command any spirits who are in the location to stay where they are. They are not allowed to follow us home. Some people may chuckle at those kinds of things. But honestly, if you're setting boundaries, they should be following those boundaries. You're setting those boundaries. You're in charge. It's important to remember that you're the one in charge. Set your boundaries. Um, A lot of people use crystals. I use crystals. We'll talk a little bit about the best crystals for protection in a little bit. But crystals, carry them on your person as jewelry in your pockets. Um, I always make sure Dave has some before we go. And he carries them in his pockets or, you know, he'll put one around his neck. And that also, I feel, helps a lot. And I think what it comes down to is that it's all about your mindset. It's all about setting your boundaries and what you believe and keeping yourself protected and being willing to do these things to keep yourself protected. If you believe that you will be protected, then you will be protected no matter what no matter what method you use to protect yourself. Um they say and and again it's important a little disclaimer that uh demonic the demonic is a very very teeny tiny little percentage of everything that goes on but you can also have jerks you can also have negative spiritual energy you can have negative residual energy negative uh intelligent energy that's there assholes you can have them all there And they're going to be hard to protect yourself from. So the more you go in with a good mindset, with a good belief system, no matter what it is, um, and the more you do beforehand to prepare yourself, the better off you're going to be. Go in with confidence, not cockiness, but also remember that if you let down your guard, things can happen. And it's really important. So make sure that your mindset is in a really good place when you go into an investigation of any kind. That's super important. That's number one. Make sure if you're not feeling well, if you're emotionally having a hard time that day, seriously consider about maybe not going or not getting yourself as involved because it can take a toll on you. I think in real life, like you're going into a meeting or you're going to uh, go to work and work with uh, a staff that drives you crazy, right? Mm -hmm. You have to mentally prepare yourself for that. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's all you need to do to get through that. It's very similar going to an investigation. A hundred percent. Mentally prepare for it. It doesn't mean you have to be afraid. It doesn't mean that you have to go over the top and think everything's going to get you. That's not the point. You know, uh, when police arrive at a scene, they don't know what they're walking into. They're walking into the situation, preparing themselves for anything that might happen. That's what you got to do when you go to an investigation. There are a lot of things and people in the living world that feed on your fear, right? Absolutely. As As does the energy in the paranormal world. It feeds on fear. A lot of times it does. So just like you would maneuver yourself In the living world, you should be thinking about maneuvering yourself. And again, not cockiness, but when I go in, I know that I've done everything that I can do. And I'm confident in the fact that I can handle myself. I can set my boundaries and I can make smart decisions to go along with this. And I do. And I realized after that night in 2020 that I really have to make smart decisions when I go into this because it isn't a game. You know, it's not a game. And so, uh, you know, yeah, it's exciting. It's exciting when things happen. I'm not going to lie. We had that case in um, in August where the things were getting thrown. I talked to you afterwards. You heard the adrenaline. It was exciting. She was more nuts than normal. 
it, I know. I know. I was like on the message thing in the car on the phone, like telling you what happened. And it's exciting. But at the same time, you have to keep your head. I actually was much calmer in the middle of the situation. And then when it hit me after the fact, I was like, oh, my God, this is crazy. But you have to keep your head and you have to be confident that you're OK, that you're the one in charge and that you can handle whatever comes to you but you have to prepare yourself it's super super important protecting yourself is very important just like it would be in the living world it is important in the paranormal world as exciting as things can be you also have to remember that it can be hard too there can be things that happen to you expect the unexpected all the time so you always want to prepare yourself as best you can Find the Sandy and Toddcast on any of the platforms that you normally find your podcasts. Be sure to like the Sandy and Toddcast on Facebook to keep up on the latest goings on, including each week's episode. Join our group. Stay weirdos, friends of the Sandy and Toddcast for even more fun. And finally, if you're thinking about starting your own podcast and just aren't sure where to start, Sandy and Todd can help with that too. Editing, producing, and consulting is what they do. Like Mind Garden Media on Facebook or email them at themindgardenmedia at gmail.com. And as always, thanks for being weird. Let's talk about crystals, because right now as I'm Mm. sitting here, I reached into my jacket pocket, which is on the back of the chair that I'm sitting in, and it's the jacket that I take to work every day, and I always have selenite in that Mm. jacket, not to protect (laughs) myself from, you know, somebody who may have passed on, or I protect myself from the people I work with with this. (laughs) And that's where everyday life comes into it, right? Yes. And- It's so funny because I have really, really gotten into collecting. I have an amazing crystal collection Um, and I'm just getting started. And it's absolutely the things that I have are amazing. Do I know what every little one is used for? Nope, because there are so many thousands upon thousands and thousands of crystals and combinations of crystals. And then they each have a name and. You know, everything's good. But what I do know is that there are, you know, seven or eight crystals that are probably the best crystals for protection during an investigation or during the day. You can wear them as jewelry on your person all the time. You can use them to meditate with. Um, As far as an investigation, you can um, carry them in your pockets. I make sure Dave has some stuff in his pockets every time we investigate something. Um, The number one crystal for me personally for protection is black tourmaline. Black tourmaline is an incredibly grounding and protective energy crystal. It dispels the negative energy. It keeps it away from you. It is incredibly strong. It is, I I would say that most people who deal with crystals a lot know that black tourmaline is right up there at your number one uh, crystal for protection, energy protection. And it's funny because I don't think I have ever done an investigation without black tourmaline. Do you have black tourmaline? I do someplace. Um, oh, that, that's hold on. Good. Well, I, I'm looking for it right now. Okay. In my bagel crystals that I have here. You hear um, that? Um, I'm trying to remember. Well, there's also black obsidian, which is another one that's a, a very uh, protective crystal, too. And they're very similar. I think this is the black. Uh, tourmaline, I think uh, that is. That's it. That's okay. It. Yep. That's your black tourmaline. Um, not to be confused with black obsidian, which is very similar looking. But black obsidian, um, uh, even polish tends to have a little rougher edges. Um, and so that's another one that's a good one to bring. And And please don't think you have to bring like 15 crystals with you. 
it protection in this in this um, case is is really it's a personal journey for you. What's and that? What's that one? That's your black obsidian. Okay. See what I mean? It's a little bit rougher. Yeah, a little it's bit almost more a little angled. bit more like the. Um, yes, like your selenite. Yeah, it's a little angled, um, but it really is a personal journey. So you need to pick you individually. Everyone individually needs to pick maybe two or three that they really feel called to them. And those are the ones that you should set your intentions for that you should use for your protection. Um, Todd mentioned selenite. Selenite is huge. We all know that selenite is our is our sort of our cleansing base. Selenite cleanses all crystals from negative energy. It can do that in the atmosphere. You can carry the selenite with you. Get a little baggy and do maybe black tourmaline and selenite. Um, another one that is great is hematite. Hematite is the same thing. It's sort of hematite is kind of neat. It's kind of grayish, different, varying, like a darker gray, but it's almost a metallic looking gray. Very cool. And pyrite, which uh, ironically, I just got a huge, beautiful piece of pyrite. Pyrite was also known as fool's gold because back in the 1800s during the gold rush, a lot of the uh, miners would find pyrite and think that it looked like and think that it was real gold because it looks a lot like it. And I learned this about it, too, is that the Native Americans used pyrite quite a bit because it has like a mirror finish to it and it has literally like crystals and they would polish it down and use them as mirrors. That's uh, cool. Isn't that neat? I thought that was very cool. That's what they would use as mirrors. They would polish down the pyrite and um, be able to see themselves in it. So I got a beautiful piece of that, and that's gorgeous. That's a little too big and heavy for me to be carrying around on investigation. However, it's a great crystal to use during meditation, maybe before an investigation. Uh, rose quartz is another good one. Rose quartz is highly recommended. And amethyst. Believe it or not, amethyst is a very good healing and protective uh, crystal. So, and the final one I want to talk about is clear quartz. That's one of my other crystals that I, without a doubt, will always carry with me into an investigation. And here's why. Clear quartz amplifies energy and intentions. So they call it, they actually refer to it as master healer, clear quartz, because of the fact that it does work so well with other crystals. So, for example, if you use it in combination with black tourmaline, it can actually amplify the abilities of the black tourmaline. So it's a very, it's like a companion crystal a lot. It's great on its own but you can use it as a companion crystal. And uh, one of my favorite pieces that I have, Todd, is that beautiful, I don't know if you remember it, but when we went up to Door County a couple of years ago and we were in Fish Creek and we stopped and we had lunch and then we went into that crystal shop. We did yep. a couple of crystal shops, but yep. the first one that we went into and I bought that beautiful, clear uh, crystal quartz sphere, mm. Um that's just absolutely gorgeous. And I use that. I actually have it near my selenite because I think it actually even intensifies my selenite. And it's just beautiful. And so it's one of my favorites. But definitely, I think, in my opinion, my suggestion is that if you pick any crystal or two crystals to use as your main protective crystals, pair it with some clear quartz because that will just amp it up just a little bit more for you and help you a little bit more. So my three that I usually carry are the black tourmaline, the clear quartz, and the selenite. Those are my three. But any of the others, hematite, black obsidian, pyrite, rose quartz, amethyst, those are good ones too. And I suggest just going, looking it up on the internet. Maybe there's another one that calls to you. See what its properties are. Maybe that you can use in conjunction. Even something that helps with your confidence. 
might be a good stone to use in a protective bundle. Um, I've seen some people, our good friend Sudi Crouch sent me a beautiful little pouch with some different protective stones. And I actually take that pouch with me a lot. It even has a couple of little pieces of Palo Santo in it. And so, you know, it's really important to use what works best for you. Again, it's a personal journey. It's a personal thing. It's very personal because it's your life. It's your being. It's your experience. So it's super, super important to make sure you're setting good intentions, that you're clear about your intentions, and that you go into it with confidence, not cockiness, but confidence to be able to protect yourself. And you'll have a great time. I don't think I've ever not had a great time doing an investigation. I, the only time I didn't have a great time is if it was because of humans. That would be the <laughs> only time. Seriously. I agree. I agree. I agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. The dead, the dead are there for you. The dead are going to be there. It's the human attitudes that kind of screw things up sometimes. But, you know, it is what it is. We'll get around it. But anyway, so yeah. So those are some of the main points of protection. Envision your shield. Do your meditation. Set your intentions. I am going in with love and light. And I do not allow anything negative to interact, to come close to me. That kind of thing. Make sure you're doing your opening and closing um, I call them prayers, but it doesn't have to be a prayer. It's more like setting your intention before and setting the intention and the boundaries after. Use your crystals that call to you that are your favorite crystals and make sure you have a really good mindset. Clear your mind beforehand and go in with a really good mindset. And I think you'd be fine. Anything beyond crystals? Um, I think that any of those work without the crystals. But again, that's why I say it's your personal journey. Yeah. If you don't feel comfortable meditating, you don't have to meditate. But I would still suggest envisioning that that dome around you, that protective shield around you. If you don't feel comfortable doing a quote unquote prayer, I would suggest just making sure you say your boundaries. Right. You know, we're about to do this. And you don't have to speak to the, the higher beings. You should at least speak to the spirits that you're about to encounter that are in the location and say, you are not allowed to do A, B, C, and D while we're here. And then I would at the very least say, you are not allowed to do A, B, C, and D now that we're leaving. Respect goes both ways. Thank them for interacting. Thank them for anything that they have done during your investigation. But then you are not allowed to follow us anywhere. You know, that kind of thing. So yep. it really is all about you, who you are as a person, what you believe is the best way for you. Doesn't have to involve crystals, but I know a lot of us use crystals in conjunction with other things. You know, it's okay. is it OK to just use crystals? Sure. Do I think that you're going to be protecting yourself as well as if you don't add something else to it? You know, if you think that carrying a wrench in with you will protect you, then it probably will. It probably will. Right. It probably will. You know, it's all about your mindset and what you believe and what you feel is the best thing for you. So. Any combination or, you know, maybe come up with your own method. But those are just the things that have worked for you and I over the years that we've found has been good. And so far, knock on wood, I have not had anything follow me home. I have not had any bad experiences. Um, I haven't really had any truly bad. Ex I've had some things that have made me a little nervous i've had chairs slammed down onto the floor i've had objects thrown against the wall i've had some negative jerks that i've encountered but i had, i can't say that i've had anything that has physically or mentally or emotionally harmed me over the years and i have to say that a lot of that is probably because of my own personal um way of setting my intentions and protecting myself right before during and after 
an investigation. I think what you need to do is think of protection as almost like a recipe. Now, mm -hmm. if you bake, you got to you got to follow the recipe for baking exactly. It's got to be exactly a teaspoon of this, exactly two cups of that. You can't mess with that too much. But when you cook, your recipe, you can adjust it. You can put in less sodium. You can put in more spices. You could change up the meat from beef to lamb or whatever you want to do, tofu, right? So I think protection is a lot like that, where there's a, a baseline of what is good and what you should do, but you can play with it a little bit to suit yourself and the way you investigate and the way you live. Make it your own. Yes. These are just... These are just, and nobody does it better than me because I'll look at a recipe and I'll be like, well, I'm doing this lower fat and I'm putting this in and adding this and I'm, but that's your basis. And that's what we're giving you is just the basis, just some ideas, just some things that we do, but make it your own because it is your journey. It's your belief system. It's your experience. It's not ours. My experience is different than yours. My experience is for the most part different than Todd's. It all depends on the Thank situation. God. Thank, Thank God. God. Yeah, I say the same thing, Todd. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> and so, and, but it's worked. It's worked for us. And, you know, I just think that just make it your own. That's a good analogy, the recipe analogy. So ghost hunting 101, what are we going to touch on next week? What's going to be our... I'm not sure yet. I would love to hear some personal stories, yes. some thoughts, opinions, personal stories. I'm going to post in our Facebook group, Stay Weirdos, Friends of the Sandy and Todd cast, looking for some personal thoughts and opinions on the season so far, what you think about the topics that we've um that we've covered so far, and if there's anything else you'd like to see. And I would love to hear some personal stories. I want I to say I want to say thank you. I had so many people reach out last week, good uh, after our podcast, um, and just I had you know people just saying, "Hey, so so sorry that you're going through that." Blah blah yeah. blah. Yeah. I had somebody reach out to me and say, "How are you doing for real?" Right. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. means so much. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Doesn't mean that I'm going to be completely open about everything, but yeah. um. I it just I, apparently it it uh, touched some people in in um, and I just appreciate people reaching out. I'm here's the truth, right? Um, I know it's just a day on the calendar, but getting from January 31st to February 1st has made a huge difference. And again, I know it's just a day on the calendar on a piece of paper kind of thing, but for whatever reason, there is a boundary there that ends that cycle for me and allows me to get going again in many ways. I think most things are so much more mental than physical. You know, it's, we were just talking today, Dave and I were talking today about how the sun is out today for the first time in 12 days. The sun is out today. It's a little bit warmer. We've been doing a little bit of cleaning and it's only February 4th, but it's mentally it's put us in a better place. And so I totally get that. Sometimes it's just something that simple that can kind of put you on the next level and, and help you a little bit. So, but I'm thankful. I'm very thankful for the people who listen to us for all of you guys, because really it's not just, we're not just here to help you guys or to give you guys entertainment we're also here for ourselves. You know, sometimes we need to talk about this stuff. And this is the platform that we have to be able to share it. And hopefully people can relate and people will be able to gain some comfort, maybe not feel so alone from the experiences that you and I have, Todd. Yeah. So, you know, we we have each other. We can talk to each other, but it's so much bigger than just you and I. It's, you know, a lot of people feel the same things that we feel. And so if we can help, it means a lot to me. So. All right. Well, uh, let's move on. We'll move on to another episode next week. We'll figure out what we're going to talk about. Uh, we'd love your stories. So make sure and let us know on Facebook. Reach out and you can direct message us. Um you can also leave it in the group and the blah, blah, yeah. blah, and the bleep, 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 direct, and that kind of stuff. Direct, 
<laughs> direct message us, message us in the group on the Facebook page, directly on our personal accounts. I know we have a lot of our friends who are our Sandy and Todd cast friends who are also our friends on Facebook now. And so just send us a message. Let us know what you're thinking and how you're doing. And if you have any stories you'd like to share about any of the topics, paranormal or not, just let us know. And we will definitely talk to you guys next week. Sounds good. Until next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.